With proving identities, um, we are asked to prove the identity that sine a plus b plus c is equal to all of this over here. Okay, that's pretty big. <laughs> so remember when you're proving the identity, your answer is your work. So you need to show your work and our job is to use the identities to show how in the world this side could be the same as this side. And we do that using identities and properties of algebra. Okay, now it's going to be near impossible to break this side apart and see where it came from. So it would be much easier to expand this side of the equation to show that it is the same as this side of the equation. So I'm going to be working with the left side to show that it looks like my right hand side. Well, what would I use? Well, notice I have angles added and I'm doing the sine of angles added together, which indicates I'm probably going to use the sine of the sum of two angles. Um, only I have three angles, so how's that going to work? Well, what I'm going to do is start by grouping A and B together as a single angle and using C as my second angle, and then I will apply this identity. Okay, so what would that look like? Well, the identity says the sine of two angles added together is the sine of the first angle, and my first angle, remember, was A plus B. So we'd have the sine of A plus B times the cosine of that second angle. My second angle here that I used was C, so times the cosine of C. Next on the identity, it says plus so I put a plus there. The cosine of your first angle, again, my first angle I was using was a plus b, so cosine a plus b times the sine of your second angle, and my second angle was c, so times sine c. So we're getting a little closer, um, but we have to keep going. We know that because we don't have near enough terms. <laughs> we're supposed to have four, and we only have two right now. Um, and also up here, everything was in terms of just A, B, and C. There were no A plus B. So we know we need to continue. And what we're going to do is expand again. Okay, so we need to get rid of these A plus Bs. Well, our identity tells us that the sine of A plus B, we can use this right here. So that's what we're going to do. For the cosine A plus B, we would just use the identity for the cosine of two angles added. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to have to expand both of those. Okay, so to make this a little more clear about my parts, I'm going to change my ink. So we're going to start by expanding this sine of a plus b. So we're going to use the identity for sine of a plus b, which is written <laughs> with a's and b's. And it says it is the sine of that first angle a times the cosine of the second angle b plus the cosine of the first angle, A, times the sine of that second angle, B. And that all was multiplied by the cosine of C. Plus, now let's expand the next portion. I'm going to change ink colors again. I don't know, just for fun, maybe. Okay, let's expand cosine A plus B. Again, I'm going to put it in brackets so that I don't forget to multiply the sine C times all of it. The cosine of an ang two angles added is like our identity says down here the cosine of the first angle cosine a times the cosine of the second angle cosine b then minus notice that's opposite sign that happens with the law of co with our identities for cosines okay the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle so sine of angle a times the sine of angle b and that was all multiplied by the sine of c so I'm getting even closer to looking like the right-hand side. Everything is now just either an A, a B, or a C. All right? No, nothing's added together. Um, but I don't have brackets up here, so I know I need to do something to get rid of those brackets. And what do we do? We distribute, which means we multiply cosine C times each of these terms and sine C times each of these terms. So let's start here. If I take cosine C times here, I get sine A, cosine B, cosine C, plus, I multiply here, that gives me cosine A, sine B, cosine C. All 
right. Now for our next bracket, we're going to distribute the sine C through there. So the first term, that gives me cosine A, cosine B, sine C. Minus, multiply here, that gives me sine A, sine B, sine C. All right, do we look like what we had up here? Let's double check. So sine A, cosine B, cosine C, perfect. Cosine A, sine B, cosine C, perfect. Plus cosine A, cosine B, sine C, perfect. And finally minus sine A, sine B, sine C, yay! <laughs> we used our identities and showed that this left-hand side, when we use identities to expand it, does actually look exactly like the right hand side. So that would be our identity proven. All right here is another example. Let's try this one out next. Again, we're asked to prove an identity. It's the identity that cotine tangent of A minus B is cotangent A cotangent B plus one over cotangent B minus cotangent A. Now notice we don't have any identities for, for cotangent, the sum or the difference. So what can we use to expand that? Well, again, it's going to be easier to expand this side than it will be to try and reduce this side at all. Okay, so I'm going to be working from this side, trying to show that it is the same as the right-hand side here. What am I going to do? Well, remember our original identities. Cotangent is equal to what? Cotangent is cosine over sine. So I'm going to change this to the cosine of a minus b over the sine of a minus b because cotangent of an angle is the cosine of that angle over the sine of that angle. Okay, so we still can use those previous identities. Well now, notice I can use my identities for subtraction. <laughs> well, I don't have those down here. Instead, I have the ones for addition. Let me make a quick adjustment here. Um, the identity for sine A minus B is the same, only it has a subtraction sign in the middle. And the identity for the cosine of subtraction is the same, but it has a plus in the middle here. There we go. We're all fixed. Okay, we have the proper identities. Now I'm going to expand this using my identities. So the cosine of A minus B is right here cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b okay next the denominator was sine a minus b that should be sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b Okay, am I any closer? That doesn't look like it <laughs> because this over here has, it's all cotangents, right? Well, let's take a look. What can I do? Well, notice you're supposed to end up with a one right here. So is there any way I could fabricate this to get a one? Um, well, if I want this to end up as a one, what I can do is divide by whatever is here. If I divide by sine A sine B, that will create a one there and that this is kind of one of the tricks of the trade for proving identities so i'm going to divide by sine a sine b i'm going to divide the numerator by that value you say well can you really do that well sure i can as long as i do the same thing to the denominator okay that was one of our rules for fractions right we use it when reducing we divide the numerator and denominator by the same number, and it's okay as long as we do the same on both. What that will do is I'm going to divide everything by sine A, sine B. So here I get cosine A, cosine B over sine A, sine B plus here sine A, sine B over sine A, sine B by design, okay, 
In the denominator, that gives me sine A cosine B divided by our sine A sine B that we're dividing everything by minus, and then we had cosine A sine B here, but again, we're going to divide that by our sine A sine B. Now let's go ahead and simplify anything we can. Well, as we designed here, sine A sine B divided by sine A sine B is just going to be 1. Okay. What can we do here? Well, cosine A sine over sine A, notice that is cotangent, right? Cosine over sine is cotangent. And here, cosine over sine is cotangent. So on top, I have cotangent A times cotangent B, because I had cosine A over sine A, that's cotangent A, cosine B over sine B, that's cotangent B, and then plus 1. Notice the top is looking good. That's exactly what I was supposed to have on the top. The denominator, what happens there? Well, sine A over sine A, those cancel, and I'm left with cosine B over sine B. What is cosine B over sine B the same as? Cosine over sine is cotangent, which would be cotangent B, since it was for angle B. Here, I have a sine B on top and the bottom that cancel, and I'm left with cosine A over sine A. What is cosine A minus sine A over sine A, excuse me, equivalent to? It's equal to the cotangent A. And look at that. I have what I needed. The left-hand side, by changing it to sines and cosines, and then dividing everything by sine A, sine B, I was able to prove that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equivalent. All right, let's